So all kinds of explosions have been going on outside my window here in Kharkov, and uh, I have no idea what's going on, because paradoxically, when you're in the middle of a war, uh, it's hard to know what's going on in, in your locality, okay? It, it's easy for people outside to get word from whoever, you know, uh, uh, military participants, uh, uh, spokespeople, whatever. But if you're actually there, you just hear like random explosions, you know, explosion over there, explosion over there. I mean, you have no idea what the hell is going on. So anyway, there have been a bunch of explosions uh, today. And uh, I don't know what they mean, but a lot of smoke in the air here in Kharkov. But I don't want to talk about the war right now. What I want to talk about is the European economy, specifically the German economy. Now, the uh, Germans just released official figures, and uh, month over month, the producer price index rose close to 6%, and year over year, it's over 35%. Now, with that level of price increase, you see, the German economy is a manufacturing economy, and uh, in fact, it's the last manufacturing economy in the West, and with that level of inflation, the German economy is simply not going to be uh, productive. It's not going to be efficient. It's not going to be worthwhile. We are seeing in real time the deindustrialization of Germany, something that took the entire post-war period from uh, 1946 all the way through, what, the 70s. This enormous industrial machine that was Germany, it took a long time to build it. And for a long time, it worked just like a charm. But over the last uh, 10, 15 years or so, things have been going sideways, if not to say south. And now, with this incredibly stupid hysteria over Russia and the Russian invasion, and having foolishly put themselves in the position where they depended on Russia, and yet went ahead and threw a hissy fit at Russia and decided to divorce Russia, even though they needed the raw materials that Russia was providing, you know, the, the commodities, you know, industrial commodities, and of course the energy commodities. And now they've cut themselves off from that, literally cutting their nose to spite their face. And now Germany's going to go down the tubes. And why does this matter? Well, for the obvious reason that the German economy is the driver of the entire European economy. And the relationship between Germany and France is the, the, the central axis around which the entire European project is built, and it's collapsing in real time. Europe is, it's, it's becoming toast. And the weird thing, the terrible thing, is that all the people in the Middle East and in Sub-Saharan Africa who are going to start to go hungry this summer because of the war in Ukraine, because Ukraine, as a major grain exporter, is not sowing the fields. There isn't going to be enough food for the Middle East and Africa, the food that they depend on. They're not going to get that food. It's going to hit Egypt particularly hard. And so all of those people in these countries, they're not going to have the money to pay for the food. And so they're going to do like a lot of their brethren did back in you know the 2015 and 2013 and so on. They're going to go to Germany. They're going to go to Europe, to Italy, to Spain, and the European continent is going to be awash in all of these migrants. Hmm? And how many there are going to be? Who knows? But you have to keep in mind that the Arab Spring of 2011, it was sparked because of a minor dip in Russian wheat production due to climate. And I think it was some rains or something that were a little bit too excessive and sort of like wiped out a bit, a bit of the grain production. And that led to such price hikes throughout the Middle East, that it sparked the Arab Spring and all of these revolutions and the Syrian civil war and all the rest of it. And of course, the waves of migrants that left the Middle East for Europe. Now imagine that, but multiplied, you know, multiplied not just by two, three, four, but like by a factor of 10, okay, or more. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare and it's going to hit Europe. And it's going to hit it now when Europe, the European economy, is collapsing. So all of a sudden you're going to have all of these refugees, economic refugees, hitting Europe right when Europe is going to be going poor, going broke. 
these next six months, you know, the, the next six months are going to be sex. The next six months to a year are going to be for Europe among the most catastrophic in its history since the end of the Second World War. And so we should be paying attention to it. And you should be paying attention to it. And if you're European, now's the time to leave. Now that you still can. Now that your euro actually is worth something rather than nothing, because very soon the euro is going to be worth absolutely nothing. It's tanking against the dollar. It's going on a downward trajectory, and there's nothing to stop it. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the dollar is no great shakes, but at least it's a little bit more solid than the euro. And of course, since nobody in the West can buy rubles because of the sanctions, the only thing left is, you know, ugly or uglier, you know, the dollar or the euro. I would go with the dollar at this point, even though uh, a few months ago I was thinking that the dollar would be toast. But right now, right now at this moment, it would be smarter to get out of the euro, get into the dollar and get the hell out of Europe. Because what's going to hit Europe in terms of lack of food, lack of heating and energy supplies and gasoline, and this enormous wave of migrants from the Middle East and from Africa, it's going to completely annihilate the European continent. And there's a cheerful thought this May 3rd. <laughs> Take it easy.